Welcome back to Epigee's YouTube channel. Today we will be showcasing the Quadro Configuration Console. The QCC tool allows an administrator to centrally manage a network of quadros. We will discuss the basic functions of the QCC as well as look at some interesting features within the GUI. Now, let's take a look. As you can see, this is the layout of the QCC's GUI. It is split into three simple panes that are separated by division bars. By dragging these bars up and down, we can define how much of the total space to allocate to each pane or section. At the top is the files pane, in the middle the server pane, and at the bottom the log pane. We will discuss the features of each of these sections during the video. Here at the top is the Files pane, which displays paths of firmware and legible configuration files specified by the user. When we right-click on this pane, we get multiple options, including Add, View, Edit, Remove, and Check and Uncheck All. When we click Add, a file library opens up to allow legible configuration files or firmware to be selected. The path of the selected file is then added to the Files pane. As you can see, the Files pane shows us the location of the file uploaded, the file version, the file type, and the product name which corresponds to the specific Quadro model we are managing. When we click Edit, it opens the file we are using with the system's default text editor, which is either going to be a notepad or Word document in most cases. If we want to remove a file from the Files pane, we right-click over the desired file and then click Remove. Click Yes when asked for confirmation. This action does not delete the file from its location, but only removes its path from the Files pane. To select all the files, right-click anywhere on the Files pane and choose Check Uncheck All. Selecting all files is useful if a number of legible configuration files are to be sequentially uploaded. We'll talk more about this shortly. In the middle is the server pane, which displays the list of quadros to be managed. When we right-click on this pane, we get the following options. Add, Edit, Delete, Manage, Check Uncheck Group, and Check Uncheck All. First. Let's right click and select add. A dialog box will pop up and this is where we can specify the following settings. For the name, we can input any text to identify the quadro we are adding. The name must be unique. The group name is optional, but forming a group of identical quadro models or locations can be very useful if we want to perform the same action with all the quadros of a specific group. For example, we can group all Quadro M8Ls on the network into one group named HQ Office. Later, if we want to update the firmware or configuration of all Quadro M8Ls, we can execute the operation on the HQ Office group instead of executing separately for each unit. Even though we are grouping all 8Ls together, we can still refer to a single device in a group. To add a quadro to an existing group, select the group name from the drop-down box or enter a name for the new group you want in the group text field. Here, we are adding the 26XI to a new group called Remote Office. Next time we add a quadro, this group name will be available. For the description, we can add any descriptive information to describe the quadro we are adding. For the host address, we input the IP address or FQDN of the Quadro. By default, the port is set to 80. Changing this is usually not required. Use Secure Connection indicates whether the HTTP or HTTPS should be used to connect to the Quadro. To set up a secure connection with the Quadro, Select this checkbox and specify the appropriate port in the Secure Port text box. By default, this is 443. For an HTTP connection, 
simply leave the checkbox clear. Finally, we have the username and password which are required for the administrator to log into the device. It is important for security reasons that they are changed from the default. Underneath, we see an email checkbox. If we check this box, then the QCC will send emails to an email account of our choice to notify a user if this quadro has become unavailable or has gone offline. This is one of the best new features we have recently added since it allows the administrator to take care of a connection issue with a quadro before the customers even notice. After we specify all the settings, we need to click OK. This entry will be added to the server pane. With the exception of the username and password, each quadro in the pane is displayed with all the settings we specified when adding it. We can see the group it belongs to, the description, the host address, whether it's using a secure connection, its status, and it shows what version of the software it is running on. If we want to edit the settings of a managed quadro, we right-click the desired quadro and select Edit, then change any of the settings necessary and click OK. To delete a quadro, just right-click the appropriate quadro and click Delete. To manage a quadro in the server pane, just click over the desired entry and click Manage. This will connect us to the quadro's web management and logs us into it automatically. To select all the quadros in a group, right-click on the appropriate entry within the group and choose Check Group. This is a useful option if further operations must be executed over a group of devices. To cancel the selection, right-click the appropriate entry within the group and choose Uncheck Group. To select all the devices, right-click anywhere in the server pane and choose Check Uncheck All. And at the bottom is the log pane, which is for informative purposes only. It gives information on the application's activities, changes in the state of devices, and operation results, which are referred to as events. Each entry in the pane starts with an icon that shows the severity of an event and the date and time when it occurred. If an event relates to a specific quadro, the description column on the corresponding log entry will start with the same name of the quadro. Furthermore, the log pane allows for the following operations, copy, select all, and clear, which can all be initiated from the right-click menu within this pane. We can right-click on one of the log entries on this pane and select copy. This will copy the selected log entries into the clipboard. We can right-click anywhere in the log pane and choose Select All, which will select all log entries available in the log pane. We can also right-click and select Clear, which will remove all log entries from the log pane. From the Operations menu at the top of the QCC's GUI, we can reboot the quadros, execute a configuration backup, upload a configuration restore, update our firmware, and send legible configuration uploads. To reboot a Quadro, all we need to do is select the checkbox in the server pane that corresponds to the Quadro we want to reboot, and then click on the Reboot icon in the toolbar or choose Reboot from the Operations menu. If we want to back up the current Quadro configuration, all we have to do is select the devices whose configuration is to be backed up and then click on the backup icon. If we want to do a configuration restore, go to the server pane and select the desired quadro and then click restore. Now, if we want to do a complete firmware update, we go to the server pane and select in the checkbox the quadros whose firmware is to be updated. Then. In the Files pane, we need to select the appropriate firmware file. After that, click the Firmware icon on the toolbar. Once we have added all the quadros we want to the QCC, we can save this list to a file with the QCC extension. 
To do this, all we need to do is choose Save or Save As from the Files menu and specify a name for the file. This is really helpful since we can send our saved list of quadros to someone else at the office who has the privilege to manage these quadros or to someone who works remotely. And that about wraps up the QCC. Thanks for tuning in to Epigee's YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the Quadro Configuration Console. Don't forget to socialize with Epigee on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course, stay tuned on YouTube. For more information, please contact us at sales at Thanks for watching.